Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to react to The Dark Knight Rises by Nostalgia Craig. This was recommended to me again by Cyril Moore, American Nerd 1776, and Stephen Riley. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, yeah, honestly, this movie, I would say, of all of uh, you know the Batman trilogy, I think, honestly, this is like the second best Batman movie after uh, you know The Dark Knight. Um, and of course, I think uh, it introduces, like, I think, honestly, in my opinion, the second best uh, live action Catwoman. My favorite is Michelle Pfeiffer. I thought she was, I thought she's, I think she's really cool and she was really, you know, fierce and crazy as Catwoman. Um, but I also, I, I like Anne Hathaway's. Um, honestly, at first, when I heard that uh she was gonna play catwoman uh i didn't think she would she was gonna do do uh too good of a role but she did she surprised me man um and of course tom hardy's uh bane uh like oh, holy crap dude i i love i love the uh, the lines um and of course that mask and uh <laughs> It's really cool. And uh, yeah, let's check this out. See what the scout nostalgia critic thinks about it. And if you want to like comment, subscribe my channel. You can if you don't want to. That's fine too. Here we go. This episode brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Also brought to you by Coinbase, the easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. I'm <laughs> Oh, your senses betray you. You are now seeing what you fear. The scarecrow's fear taps and strikes again. Here's one of your fears now. The villain from Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. It's Batgirl? Oh, sorry. And an even bigger apology for ruining <laughs> Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed. It was like hard. So we will destroy the Batman franchise with bat credit cards, bat nipples, and bat hockey pads! <laughs> Didn't we just do this? What's that? Didn't we literally just do this plan like two reviews ago? Yeah, like some characters are different, but isn't this like the same thing? How dare you? This is far more expensive! And far more familiar. Look, look, you know how everyone said the one with the Joker is one of the greatest things ever made? Yeah. Well, we're taking inspiration of the lesser one before that. Isn't that, like, backwards? Of course! It's the most Christopher Nolan thing to do. Whatever, you're gonna get hate for this no matter what. I suppose you're right. Roll the thing. When the much-anticipated Dark Knight Rises came out in 2012 after one of the greatest comic book movies ever made and another runaway blockbuster, the hype behind Christopher Nolan's third and final Batman film was immeasurable. And I will say, the people who loved it insanely loved it. And the people who didn't, I think were given the same treatment as the folks on the Gotham Bridge. I, as you probably guessed, was one of those people who didn't care for it. In fact, I hated it. I loved The Dark Knight so much that I was ruthless on this film. I haven't even watched it since it first came out. Well, ten years later, I put it on again, and I have softened a bit. The acting is pretty good, the size and scale are massive. I'll even go so far as to say the majority of this movie is very impressive to watch. In fact, upon revisiting it, I think it only has one problem. The script. That's all. Just the words, choices, and basic root element of cinematic storytelling sucks. But aside from that, it's really good. Okay, I know I'm gonna get ripped apart for this, so I'll try to praise what is legit awesome about this film. But I'm not gonna pretend the stuff I think is bad isn't bad. As always, I'll be as honest as I can, for better or worse. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, what the? You're trying to hide yourself so you're not connected with my opinions on this movie, aren't you? Hey, if you want to ruin all that DC goodwill you built up, then kick me out of it. Yeah, fool me once, right? <sighs> okay, fair enough. This is my solo. Yep. Definitely solo. Review of Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I will give that. Uh... Yeah, Bane had the worst death and of course also Talia like like you were expecting like oh like 
Bane is going to be taken out a big way. Um, nope, freaking Catwoman all of a sudden just busts in and kills him. Like, what the freak? The movie opens randomly reminding us that Harvey is dead. I believed in Harvey Dent. Thanks. Just throw this in there too in case we forget. But it gets pretty cool with an intro clearly trying to top the bank robbery opening in the last one, but who cares? It kicks ass. CIA agents capture the mercenary known as Bane, played by Tom Hardy, and try to make him think they're killing his henchmen. A lot of loyalty for a hired gun! Or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot a man before throwing him out of a plane. Or how a voice and a mask can sound like 20 sound filters on top of each other. If you're wondering why he sounds like he's clearly in a recording booth, it's because there was a lot of complaints that Bane was too hard to understand in the trailers. When Gotham is ashes, you have my permission to die. This dude does do a lot of talking, so my guess is they brought him back and re-recorded or re-altered his voice several times. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. You're a big guy. For you. I actually really like his voice despite everybody's impressions. Bane in the Harley Quinn show is entirely written around how hilarious it sounds. I am cutting this card! Blades are dull. I will bend it! But again, it's a Batman villain. I want him to sound a little weird. What am I gonna say? The Joker sounds too high pitch or the Penguin grunts too much? Their silly voices are part of what makes them distinct. With that said, it is great when his voice breaks and he sounds like a drunk Sean Connery from Red October belching helium. Of course! The Batman, to my shame, police is mobile! Opportunity! If Soda Popinski had a voice! It turns out Bane just needs the doctor on this flight, and he arranges the plane to be rotisserie by another plane. I honestly have no troubles with this scene. It's pretty sweet. Did you like pretty my sweet. impression of a creaking door? No! They expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. The recruiter with the pamphlet should have told you. <laughs> yes, you can question the logistics of this plan, but let's use the same rules as Dark Knight. It's a comic book movie, so anything heightened that makes the characters look smarter or stronger is fine. However, anything heightened that makes the characters look stupid or lazy, I'm going to call out. Because that's not fun, that's stupid or lazy. Like at Wayne Manor, how Gordon is about to tell a group of cops he lied about Harvey Dent and the Batman for eight years. Maybe the time isn't right. Don't worry, he's not that stupid. He'll just carry it around on missions, so a criminal may find it and read it later. Not to go into spoilers, but a criminal finds it and reads it later. The mayor's gonna dump him in the spring. Must be popular with his wife. Not really. She took the kids and left for Cleveland. Yeah, that's right. Gordon's family left him. Isn't that exactly what you were hoping for at the end of Dark Knight? Oh my god, the suspense. I hope after this they get divorced. To be fair, he did pretend to be dead to protect their lives, resulting in their lives being threatened, but piss off, comic books. You ever lay eyes on Wayne at one of these No one has. Not in years. Bruce Wayne has stayed out of the game for eight years, and all the aches and pains catch up with him, forcing him to walk with a cane and a stick to keep his balance. I don't care, it's mine! It's mine! It's my bad joke and I love him! <laughs> but Selena Kyle, played by Anne Hathaway, plays never once in this movie called Catwoman, who tries to get Wayne's fingerprints. Call me crazy, but I figure Batman and or Bruce Wayne would have better security than this. You wouldn't beat up a woman any more than I would beat up a cripple. I was the Dark Knight! Good night, Mr. Wayne. Bye. So I know some people love or hate Anne Hathaway, and I'm honestly indifferent to her. So when I first saw her in this, that was my reaction. Indifference. She was just another Catwoman to me. Didn't leave that big an impression. Watching it what? again, she's both a little worse and a little better than I remember. Put bluntly, she sucks as a villain. You gotta be kidding me. No guns, no killing. Where's the fun in that? I never buy it. It looks like an act. She plays evil the same way a villain at a kid's birthday party plays evil. It's clearly for show. Still don't trust me, huh? How can we change that? However, I do kind of buy her as a badass hero. Catwoman always flip-flops between sides, and when she fights, or even just walks alongside Batman, it does look pretty cool. I'd probably buy her more as a warped version of Batwoman or Batgirl or something. Speaking of which, can I be Robin? You got something you want to <laughs> ask me, Officer Blake? Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Officer Blake. You should use your full name, Robin. Holy self-service who figures out what <laughs> nobody else in Gotham could, Bruce Wayne is Batman. How? Just, just the look on his face. My mom died when I was small. I'd seen that look on your face before. It's the same one I taught myself. Right when I saw you, I knew who you really were. 
Oh, god damn this script. Mm, mm, god damn this script. Mm. I know I said I wouldn't attack any heightened elements in this, but this isn't heightened. This is freaking supernatural. He figured it out having never seen or heard Batman, but just by looking at Wayne's face. Holy underwritten metropolis. <laughs> and the funny thing is, this wouldn't be hard to fix. Just have Batman walk by him at one point and Blake be like, I recognize that chin. That'd work. I buy that. At least he would have seen the two to compare them. But this psych kid is a damn miracle. He could have been millions outing other superheroes just by looking at him. Diana Prince, Clark Kent, Peter Parker, Jennifer Waters. Congratulations. All these heroes are being hunted down and or destroyed. Uh. Don't talk. You've done enough. Yeah, that's, uh, that part made no sense to me. Like, like. How? It's never explained. Like, how? How did he know, dude? Freak. Like, how the hell did he know? Speaking of which, and I do literally mean speaking of which, you notice how much damn talking there is until Batman shows up? It takes him 45 minutes to appear, which is honestly fine as the other movies took their time setting up stuff too. But it always felt like something was moving forward in those movies. Bruce was having flashbacks or traveling place to place before he became Batman. Gotham's law enforcement were trying to take down the mob with Batman's help before the Joker story really got going. This is literally just people sitting around explaining exposition. Maybe for a second you'll see Catwoman do something or Bane do something, but it's mostly just people in one spot yapping. I'm trying to talk to a man who threw away your investment. Do you understand only money? And the power you think it goes about. by his gut, and it continues to bother him no matter what. When you and Dad cleaned up the streets. You clean them good. I'm not hearing a question. A lot of guys were going down in tunnels. The made. foundation is funded by the profits of Wayne. Even <laughs> before you became a recluse, you never came to this. You came here yeah, from your walk up in Old Town, a modest place. For you me. should hear the rumors surrounding. <laughs> Hey, I bet the story about Alfred <laughs> hoping to see Bruce and a loved one in Florence will be how the movie ends. How do I know? Because it's the only time we cut away from somebody talking. And honestly, I'd be more lenient about it if the characters were as interesting as Dark Knight or Batman Begins. All the new characters introduced in those movies were really engaging. Even the gangsters, which you've seen a million of in these films, all have distinct memorable personalities. All the new characters here are forgettably generic. We got Blake. He's tough. One of Bruce's biggest investors, Miranda. She's tough. Selena is fake tough. I completely forgot Daggett was in this movie, and that's one of my favorite Batman villains. He's well, clearly you don't know much of anything, do you? Where's Bane? Annoyingly whiny and tough. I guess there's Matthew Modine, who does have a pretty good arc by the end, but until that point, he's also pretty whiny when not tough. I'll give it this, I am happy when Batman shows up. Not because he's gonna save any of these boring people, but because something is finally happening. But this does raise the question, how will he get past years of being physically disabled? Better, off we go. Yep. Uh -uh. Okay, so far so good. His tumbler is turned into Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that's cool. He has arguably the best line in the movie. Let's go. So that's what that so that feels like. That's way too funny, it has to be from the comics. Yeah, still a good scene. They just don't care. Yes, he still has that voice, and yes, he still mouth breathes so much I can't help but make this sound. <laughs> but it's still good to have Batman in this Batman movie. And all it'll cost you as an Alfred. You leave me? You're not Batman anymore. You have to find another way. Yeah, remember the Alfred that said endure, take it, Batman can make the choice no one else can? You spat in the faces of Gotham's criminals. Didn't you think there might be some casualties? Things were always gonna get worse before they got better. Well, now it's give up! Let someone else do it! No one cuddles me at night anymore! <laughs> what if before she died, she wrote a letter saying she chose Harvey Dent over you? I give credit that this movie reneges a little bit on the lies told at the end of the last one, as I never knew what to think of that ending, and clearly the writers didn't know either, as both the truth about Rachel and later Dent are revealed. Maybe it's time we all stop trying to outsmart the truth and let it have its day. The acting here is also top-notch from both Kane and Bale. But Alfred doesn't want Bruce to die, so he won't help him anymore, leaving him to die. I know what this means. Your hatred, but it might also mean saving your life. Now, Timmy, I'm tired of catching you every time you jump from the bookcase, so I'm not going to catch you this time saving your life. What's Bruce been doing those eight years out of the limelight? Well, not protecting his finances because now he's completely broke. 
They bring Miranda, who may end up owning the company, to Applied Sciences, and I will admit, I forgot how awesome this show was. This is a Disney. No, this is goddamn Fox, who will soon be Disney. <laughs> the show her investment is going to a machine that can create clean, renewable energy. Or blow up the world. Someone will figure out a way to make this power source into a nuclear weapon. I prefer you back to eh, comics! Miranda does end up owning the company as well as Bruce's Little Wayne. That is, if he can figure out how to get inside his house without Alfred. Do you have keys? Never needed them. Batman, everybody! Despite the two having absolutely no chemistry, they decide to bonk. And yes, there is technically a reason she does it, but again, how did Batman not figure it out? And he tells Selina if she helps him find Bane, he'll help clear her name so that she can go back to feeding her... Hey. She doesn't even own a cat! <laughs> she leads him to Bane, all right, by trapping him so he has to face him alone. Bane reveals he's from the League of Shadows and... I'm sorry, but in a choice I just can't get behind, he's a massive simp for Ra's al Ghul. I am the League of Shadows. Yeah, he just wants to destroy Gotham for the same reason Ra's did. Crime, corruption, economic inequality, which didn't the League say they kind of caused? With Gotham we tried a new one, economics. And instead of making him a unique epic villain, they just make him a basic bitch for a previous <laughs> one. I'm here to fulfill Ra's al Ghul's destiny! Imagine if Killmonger in Black Panther was like, I will fulfill Baron Zemo's legacy. You'd miss all this amazing stuff that makes him one of a kind. It just wouldn't feel as grand or new. Also, The Dark Knight, said by many to be one of the greatest comic book movies ever, kind of feels like a detour now, doesn't it? League of Shadows wants to destroy the city. Defeated. Joker wants to drive everyone mad. Stopped. League of Shadows wants to destroy the city. Oh shit! Just when I thought I saw everything, I get to see it again! It does lead to some cool stuff, though. I love how Bane knows all Batman's moves because they were trained by the same people. This fight scene in general is pretty great. Okay, it looks a little fake, but both actors are into it. You feel the intensity. And though Hardy said he hated beating up his childhood hero, he sure does sound like he's having a ball. Shadows betray you because they belong to me. <laughs> oh man, you beat him to his hangover face. <laughs> you merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. But that pesky writing, where is all of this taking place without him ever knowing? Your precious armory, gratefully accepted. World's greatest detective. How much work did Alfred do? I was wondering what would break first, your spirit or your money. Oh, I should have wore hockey pants. Plus, ain't that from the comics? <laughs> All right, everybody, settle down, settle down. Thank you. Not sure how I can hear you through this, but today's announcements, DoorDash. Yes, this is a weird school that does sponsorships, and this past year has taught us to savor every moment together. Spend less time prepping and cooking and more time with the people you love, with the help of DoorDash. It's better than our cafeteria food, am I right? <laughs> Somehow I can still hear your silence. Get what you want to eat right now and right to your door with DoorDash. Along with the restaurants you love, you can now get groceries and other essential items delivered with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items in under an hour. Craving late night ice cream? Of course, your kids. By the way, there will never be ice cream in the school cafeteria after what Timmy did. He knows what he did. Forget that one key ingredient for dinner, or maybe you just need to stock up for the week. With DoorDash, get everything in one app. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy, and your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. Also, Susie, report to my office. I hear you know something about Timmy and what he did. I want names. For a limited time, get 25% off and zero delivery <laughs> fees on the first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code NOSTALGIA. That's 25% off and up to $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code NOSTALGIA. For God's sakes, don't have the ice cream we may still have left behind here. And don't forget that code is NOSTALGIA for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, term supply. And uh, some other quick announcements. Uh, 
Do you identify as crypto curious? Don't give me that look I can feel through the PA system is what they're having me say here. If you thought about entering the world of cryptocurrency but felt a little overwhelmed, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell simple. Being children, I'm sure you all will have a need for this. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. They support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app, so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. And it's just in Billy's into cryptocurrency is a millionaire, and I suck. Billy report to my office for tampering with notes. However, millions of people in 100 countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. Whether you're looking to diversify, just getting started, or searching for a better way to access crypto markets, start today with Coinbase. Just don't eat the ice cream. Final warning. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at Coinbase.com slash Nostalgia. Sign up at Coinbase.com slash Nostalgia for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's Coinbase.com slash Nostalgia. And I, uh, think that's about it. Let me just sit down in this chair, which I'm sure no student has tampered with. <laughs> Excuse me, I farted. Selena tries to leave Gotham, but is picked up by the police. The Dent Act allows non-segregation based on extraordinary need. You wanna hold my hand? is taken to a faraway prison where Bane was raised. He'll, of course, let Bruce watch the destruction of Gotham because comic villains are morons and kill him off after. Prisoners try to get out of the giant plot hole this movie keeps digging for itself and Bruce is told of the one prisoner who did. He says there is one who did. A child. A girl, that is very important. Yeah, all right, we'll get to that twist later, but for now, he thinks it's Bane whom the police think they have surrounded, so they literally throw in every cop in the city. Their words, not mine. Every cop in the city. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. dumb. This is so stupid, yeah. it actually looks funny. How can you not laugh at all of this giant city's cops going to one bust? Even the reporters are like, are you high? We're seeing literally thousands of police heading into the sewers. Mr. Mayor, we're literally thousands of police. It's a training exercise. No. I swear, there was a scene cut from the movie where she says, are you high? Big shock, this wasn't such a good idea. As a bunch of explosions trap them in the tunnels, blow up Gotham's bridges, and for some reason cut up this cool shot from the trailer. Why'd you do that? That one take was amazing. This bomb is armed, and the identity of the trigger man is a mystery. Well, this is a weird halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> the doctor from earlier turns the energy source into a bomb, and Bane says he'll detonate it if anyone tries to get in or out of Gotham. He reads Gordon's letter about how Batman was innocent and Dent went insane, which, I mean, he is a supervillain. He could be lying. But whatever, this gets Gotham up in arms and is returned to the people who feel wronged. The rich are poor, the poor are rich, the guilty innocent, the innocent guilty, getting across the incredible message of... Inequality sucks! Yeah, kind of like Occupy Wall Street, which they said they weren't inspired by, and I do believe them. They're doing the same thing, pointing out similar problems, but not really offering solutions. Even though this had no connection to that movement, it was clearly on their minds the same time it was on all these other people's minds. There's just something about that place and time that got people talking about it. Maybe that's why a lot of these characters' choices seem so dumb. They're letting the commentary drive the characters rather than the characters drive the commentary. With that said, what is Batman gonna do? I mean, Bane broke his back, recreating one of the most iconic comic book mm -hmm. scenes ever. What do they seem to have down there? A rope? It's gonna take years of physical therapy to- <laughs> Better. Let's climb out of here. Oh, I broke my back again! For several months, Gotham is ripped apart, and Bruce tries to escape with the other prisoners chanting, but he never makes it. When he's told the child made it without a rope, he decides no snot-nosed pipsqueak is gonna upstage him. Is that me? Rise. You've been down there for months, and now you ask what that means? If I was digging out of prison and my cellmate said dick cabbage every time I did, <laughs> day one! I'd be like, what's dick cabbage? I'm kind of curious what that's about. How much work did Alfred do again? 
He climbs up without a rope. That's... Yeah, okay. Yeah. And he, of course, makes it out. Just in time, too, as the best cameo in the movie says Gordon is on thin ice and sentences him to death. By thin ice. Batman. This blocks the remote detonator signal to the bomb. Get it onto it before sunrise. So a lot of people ask, how did Bruce get back to Gotham and how's he able to walk on that thin ice when everybody else falls through? Well, one they did show, he actually can walk on thin ice. Not gonna lie, I was pretty impressed by that callback. Number two, he's Batman. He got back because he's Batman. Impossible. Can't believe my prison with no guards and a giant hole a child jumped out of didn't work! After what, the tenth time I asked how Nolan could never tell Bale Batman looks hilarious with his mouth open? I'm so baked. They get all the cops out of the tunnel. Again, maybe should have killed them, Bane. And the battle for Gotham begins. <laughs> I'll say this too, you really do see the money on the screen. Not only is it impressive that all those people are really there and not CG'd in, and that there was at least an attempt to make it about the city and not just Batman, but the effects for being 10 years old hold up pretty good. If anything leading up to this made a lick of sense, I'd totally be invested. Go, go. Is he back? Is Spider-Man back? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs> World's greatest detective finally puts together, maybe hitting Bane's mask will work. Yeah, even the CIA agent figured that out right away. If I pull that off, will you die? And he finally gets him down for the count. Where's the trigger? What? I never give it to an ordinary citizen. What? Where Ironically, I can't understand you. Tell me what <laughs> Then you have my permission to die. So that's what that feels like. <laughs> but we get our big twist, I guess. It was Miranda all along. My mother named me Talia before she was killed. It turns out she's the kid that escaped and she's the daughter of Ra's al Ghul and... I don't know, I, I, is this what you wanted? Catwoman and Bane in a movie together and it's a last minute twist daughter of a villain from two movies ago that's our mastermind? This isn't like Marvel where there's like five dozen films to try this out on. This is the climax of only three movies. With a roster of amazing villains and we're ending with her? Okay, you got 10 minutes of climax left. Maybe the writing for her will be really stellar. His only crime was that he loved me. That is a fake line. You put that in as a joke. These are Oscar nominated writers! They're ready to go up with the city as she gets ready to set off the bomb with her detonator. <laughs> Where's the kaboom? Gordon turned off the bomb, so she rushes to find him. Which is good, she shouldn't have to see Bane go out like a bitch. About the whole no guns thing, I'm not sure I feel as strongly about it as you do. Mmm, that's an orgasm of lame. Well, it's gonna take Bruce a while to recover with that knife in his side better. But they discover the bomb is activated, and naturally, Batman has to sacrifice himself, flying the bomb away from the city. I'm still so baked. <laughs> After his supposed death, I guess they throw a great Gatsby funeral because almost no one attends. Probably because people are too busy going to Batman's memorial. And nobody puts together they died on the same day. Honestly, it's a little douchey even after he's dead, none of his friends say, oh, by the way, this guy was Batman, he was a good dude. I mean, they literally made a statue out of him. I don't think they're gonna charge you with anything. It's not even an accurate likeness, his mouth is closed. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I failed you. You trusted me, and I failed you. I mean, you did. How's that whole, I'm gonna leave you to kill yourself so you don't kill yourself thing work out? Wayne Manor is turned into a center for at-risk kids led by Blake. Robin. Oh, blow me. Where he <laughs> discovers the back cave below. And if you're like me, you know when this movie really should have ended. I know it's like the ending to Inception, but Christopher Nolan has shown us he likes doing the same thing over and over, so why not here? It'd be so good if it was left open. Did he see him? Did he not? Was Selena there? Was someone else he found there? Your imagination and your interpretation of the characters would fill in the blank. But instead, Bruce found the exact cafe he went to in Florence. Absolutely nobody recognizes a face that was constantly on magazines. And this trilogy finally ends. Folks, I tried. I just can't get into it. <laughs>
<laughs> I will admit there are a lot of things to take into consideration. Trying to up the spectacle of the Dark Knight, trying to be respectful and not bring back Heath Ledger's Joker. Trying to tie things together when you can't use the storyline of your most iconic villain. But I really think they should have just done a villain from scratch and not connect him to a villain from the first film. Or if you're gonna do that, do the Scarecrow, damn it! Yeah, I know I never shut up about him, but that is the only first movie villain you could get material from to fill a sequel. At least in a way that'd be satisfying. I think it wanted to up the commentary, up the effects, up the size, and in the process of figuring out the technicals, it lost the human connection. But like I said, that is all on a script level. And yes, that's one of the most important things, but watching it again, I was impressed with how many elements did hold up in terms of technology, size, scale, and performances. You legit feel the effort with every frame. It in no way feels like a lazy movie. Just a misguided one. And even then, that's just my take. I know a lot of people who love this film, and if it really moved you in a profound way, I'm not going to stand in front of that. Its heart is in the right place, and it's clearly trying to do right by Batman. With that said, do you think it did do right all these years later? Were you like me and felt it couldn't live up to the hype, or do you feel like it followed through on all its epicness? Also, how do you rank the Dark Knight films? I know my ranking's pretty obvious, but I'd love to know yours. Whatever your thoughts on the Nolan trilogy, I think we all owe him a big thing for bringing back Batman into the cinematic spotlight, mm -hmm. reminding us why we love the shadow of such a powerful symbol. Okay, that was the Dark Knight Trilogy. Why are we all still here? Oh, did you think that was it? Kinda, yeah. But I have an amazing twist for you. I am, in fact, not the real villain. Oh, we didn't really care if you were. It was an unsung hero who was in the movie under your nose the whole time. Okay, who? Hey, guys. Tony from Hack the Movies here. Wait, how is he the villain? He wasn't even in Dark Knight Rises. Oh, yes, I was. I so rarely talk about it. Here's the bandana I wore while shooting, and here's a couple pictures I took from the set. Just watch the stadium scene. I'm right... Cool. ...there, behind the goalpost. Unexpected, isn't it? I guess. Therefore epic! Not really. Aw, oh, our friends have betrayed us, Tony, from Hack the Movies. It's hard being the glue that holds a film together. We must rectify this, Tony, from Hack the Movies. You are the twist villain everybody wanted to see. I didn't even know he was in the film. So tell me what I must do for my epic conclusion. Uh, maybe you can review the other two best Batman movies. Of course! It'll be something new and unexpected! He totally announced that at the beginning of the month. But has he talked about those films before? Multiple times. Then we are following the Nolan model. Repeat, repeat, and repeat. Repeat. You know, I was happier when I literally didn't exist. <gasps> I was played by Matt. Does this mean I'll disappear too? The world is too small for the star of the Dark Knight Rises to disappear. Oh, good. Who are you? I'm not sure anymore. Are you my <laughs> mommy? Why is this still going? Because I love doing this voice. Well, stop it. Bye, voice. The Batman. <laughs> uh, I still love the portrayal of uh, Bane by Tom Hardy. And of course, uh, like I said, I like Anne Hathaway's Catwoman. Because um, I think the inspiration for uh, her acting was, uh, I think there was a real like woman who was a real. Uh, she was a she was into gymnastics, and I think she was a real cat burglar or a burglar or something like that. Um, but of course, you know, like I've said before, lots of movies have their flaws. You know. Um, as long as it does not overshadow the movie, you know, it can be at least good and enjoyable, you know. Of course, sometimes, uh, yeah, it's it's so bad to where it's like, like, <laughs> you can't watch the movie without laughing, man. Um, anyway, like I said, I still like this movie. I thought it was cool. Um, of course, nowhere it's... Of course, you can tell, like, they're trying to top the last movie, but of course, you know, they can't. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, the whole thing with the, oh, bring in all the cops. 
to one place. Like, uh, that was kind of stupid. That was so stupid. Like, I mean, why, why would you do that? Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. That's my reaction to The Dark Knight Rises by Nostalgia Craig. And, uh, yeah, I hope everybody had a good and safe Thanksgiving. And uh, everybody take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.